Hey y'all, it's uh, Tuesday, about, I don't know, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it actually feels pretty good, it's about 50 degrees, but it's going to get really cold this weekend uh, for us, I, and I know a lot of you guys are up north, and you're getting really, really hammered right now with the snow and the below freezing weather and wind chill factors, but uh, for us, this is probably going to be our two coldest nights, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and I think they're around 15 degrees. Then it goes back up to lower 20s, mid-20s or so, and, you know, uh, low 30s or whatever um, for our lows, which is still cold, but, you know, it's a lot better than some of you guys who got it, so you guys stay warm. But anyway, I thought I'd do this video, and, I, and I've mentioned it before in a couple of the videos I did do when I was just playing around with the solo. I just put a couple of panels up, just mess around, see what they would do. Uh, you know, they were partially shaded, so only got a couple hours of actual sunlight each day. Again, I was just playing, and I had a cheap uh, sun grid tie inverter, um, and I had a problem with that, and uh, I actually still have it, uh, but I'll, I'll do another video on that thing. But these are the M-Phase, um, M215, and I bought these things way over a year ago uh, with the intentions of hooking them up. Once I got up here and got the cabin done, well, I still don't have the cabin done, but I do have the power run up here, so I do have enough done to where I can actually hook these things up to uh, the cabin. Now, the advantages of these and the reason I went this way, because I did a lot of research and watched a lot of YouTube videos on these, and I don't take everything that I see on YouTube uh, as the gospel, um, because... You know, everybody's opinion is different. You know, everybody has different results. And, and then there are some people out there that just do videos that have, unfortunately have no clue what they're talking about. It's almost like they're reading something straight out of a book or, you know, or they went by what somebody told them and somebody told them wrong. But anyway, I, I did my own research. Now, I did watch a lot and I took some advice from some of the videos, but I did my own research too. And I think everybody should do their own research and you make sure what you're doing and the advice you're getting is right so you don't make any major uh, expensive mistakes uh, but the reason I went with these in face and one of the things I found out about them later on uh, that when they first come out they were having problems with these things I don't want to say burning up but they were just shorting out or whatever was going wrong when they were going out and they were going wrong um, these this particular one is like, if I'm not mistaken, because I talked to the guy quite a bit on the phone, and of course, salesmen will tell you whatever you want to hear to, to sell you something. But again, I backed it all up with a lot of my own research. But these are, if I'm not mistaken, are what they call the third generation. They only improve. It, it, each time they come out with an, another one, they got better and better. They were learning from their mistakes. They were a new company. These things were new. Um, nobody was making these things. I'm not saying they were the first because I don't know. And there are a lot of cheap, from what I understand, Chinese microinverters, real cheap ones out there. Yeah, I've seen videos that said they were great, and I've seen videos that said that they were crap. So, again, um, you do have to do your own research. But apparently these are, and I, and I may be wrong, but I think these are third generation. Uh, they, they've improved a lot on these things and, and they hold up a lot better um, now this is one of the microinverters I have four panels which only have two and I'll show you that in a second I'll explain why I did what I did um, but this is one of the microinverters now each panel you have to put one microinverter on each panel now that's a drawback but it's not a drawback um, and then this is what they call a trunk now not particularly this end, but this end would actually be run to a junction box or something, disconnect. Uh, then it would be run to your breaker box. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a 30 amp, maybe 50 amp, I'm not sure. It depends on how many volts you have going through it or whatever. But they call this a trunk. And what happens is, and you'd have to watch some of the videos with these things. This cap here comes off, and this is where one of these would plug into it. Uh, when it was up on the panel and this trunk actually has I ordered four well 
the company that I ordered for, I don't know if they did it as a mistake or they did it intentionally, but they sent me five. It's basically five connections where I could put five panels on, which is great, and, and I appreciate it. Um, but I only have four panels. But that leaves me one open, so in case I want to add another panel later, which I will. And that's another advantage to this system. You can keep uh, adding on and connecting more and more panels to it. I forgot what the limit is, but it's quite a bit, so you can actually do it. Now, one of the disadvantages of this, or not disadvantage, I'm sorry. I meant to say advantage is... When you hook these up, and these are the two panels, I put these up quite a while back with the intentions of going ahead and hooking it up when I first got the uh, electric run up here and just never got around to it, so it's just been sitting here. Uh, this is a very short pole it's sitting right in front of the house. It's not going to stay here. It's temporary just to get as much power out of it as I can get out of it. Instead of having these things pack, packed away in a box, I might have well use and get... Uh, the power out of it. Uh, right now, it's not critical, um, and, and I don't see it being critical in the, in the long run, but our average electric bill uh, this past month was $60. We don't use a lot of electric. Uh, we cook with gas, and right now we are heating with gas, um, and we don't use a lot, a lot of electricity with anything. Uh, eventually, we're going to go to wood, but one of the advantages of this, like I was getting ready to say, you have to have one of these on each panel and they will all connect to that trunk and that one trunk at the end of that line will get connected to your uh, meter box uh, and it will direct feed it right into your house so you don't have to have batteries or anything the drawback to that though is if the power goes down so does this you don't get any power from it um, Let's see what I was trying to think of here. Now, you have to have one of these for each box. Well, it, I'm trying to remember exactly what I paid. I can't remember, and I may be wrong. So, And every company has different prices on them out there. But I think I paid $150 each. If you go and buy a good quality grid tie inverter, um just say uh, 2500 watt uh, grid time inverter it's going to cost you five six seven eight hundred dollars well you can hook four panels five whatever you can actually up to 2500 watts to them well that's your limit you can't go any more if that grid time inverter burns up blows out you're down your whole complete system is down the thing with these guys you got one on each one they're all tied together but if one goes out, the others keep working. So you only lose the power coming from one panel. You don't lose the power coming from all the panels, which means you get keep getting power. Uh, so that's the advantage of this. And if these things cost, again, I'm going by what I thought they were. In the, and I've seen deals on, on the Internet. The more you buy, the less they are. So you get actually a better deal. But um, so if you figure if you're paying $500, uh, $600 for a 2500 watt these are 225 watt panels uh, so four of those would be a 900 watts you know that would be four of these these here that cost you $600 you know but the thing is like I said you're only replacing one of these you're not replacing a six five six seven hundred dollar um, inverter you only just replace in one micro inverter so I think that's actually a better deal uh, for me it is anyway I think this is the best way to go and again I'm still experimenting I'm still playing with this but I think this is gonna be the best deal um, let me go back over here I'm gonna show you guys one other thing and if you guys have any questions about this um, you know go ahead and feel free to uh, private message me or you know um, uh, make a comment or whatever and I'll try my best to help you or kind of steer you in the right direction again I'm no expert at this I'm far from an expert I'm still learning and I'm, I, I, I want to learn more and more about it 
but uh, I've actually researched this a lot. Like I said, I've seen a lot of videos on the, uh, on YouTube and um, other places. People claim to be experts and know so much about it. You know, it's good. You can get a lot of information off of YouTube, and, and I've gotten a lot of information off of YouTube, and I learn a lot of things off of YouTube, but I've also watched a lot of videos where people... And, you know, it, it might be cruel what I'm getting ready to say, but they're idiots. They're, some of them are just total idiots. They're out there telling people things they know they're wrong, or maybe in their mind they don't know they're wrong, but they haven't researched it. So when you watch a video, don't just take that as gospel. Go out and actually research it. Make sure the information is right before you actually go and invest a ton of money in something or hook up something that's going to cost you a ton of money or, or it could possibly burn your house down or something else. Because I've seen some of these guys do some things that you could tell they had no clue what they were doing. But you couldn't tell them that. I've seen it in some of the comments, and unfortunately there's a lot of people on YouTube that no matter if they're right or they're wrong, you can't tell them they're right or they're wrong because in their mind they're right. Well, anyway, this is one of the caps. This is just a, uh, hang on a second. Uh, a cap that actually comes on. It's nothing. You just pull it off and it plugs in there. Now, since I have an extra thing here, they sent me, or no, actually, I ordered it just in case I had to disconnect the panel for some reason or whatever. This here. This is a watertight sealed cap. That's actually a rubber gasket around there. And this, when you put it down in there, it actually clicks in and locks in and seals this thing up tight because you got to remember that all this is outside. It's in the exterior. And you just put it in here and you just push it down. It clicks and it locks in. Well, the only way, well, I'm sure there's a way you can hack this or get it out, but th these two tools are not too expensive and not expensive at all this is a special made tool for removing these caps uh, so you should order one of these when you do it but what it does it just slips over here and it slips down in those holes as you see right here there's one on each side and those prongs just slip down in there and it releases there's a little metal thing there and it just releases it it's kind of hard to do because I didn't push it all the way in but basically it just pulls this cap off it releases the cap and uh, you can just pull this cap off and uh, you can plug another panel back into it or whatever you want to plug into when you want to plug something into it but I have five now I have four panels I'm gonna eventually hook all four up I'm gonna put it up on another 10 foot pole like I had the other one down there, uh, the other one down there, uh, and I showed you guys when I did install it. That sun is kind of bright. I can't see really see, but it's it's down there. It's uh, the one with the ten foot pole that I did the videos on. There it is. I think. Again, I can't really see. The sun's running my eyes here. Yeah, that's it right there. But uh, I have uh, 160 watt panels. That I'm gonna hook, but I gotta bury a cable coming down from that and run it all the way up to here, and um, it'll be grid tied too. Um, well, actually, some of them be grid tied, and uh, then I got some more I'm gonna order to run my battery bank because I do have a battery bank which I haven't been using since I moved up here. But this, these 225 watt panels. Again, I set them right here in front of the house. They're not going to stay here. They're only here temporarily because it's a very short run. It's no trees around, and I can get direct sunlight, as you guys can see. Uh, so I can get as maximum off of them that I can get off of them in the wintertime. Um, it will get moved. This is a very short uh, uh, pole. This is one of the satellite poles. Uh, again, I just stuck it down in the ground, bolted all that stuff together to hold it. Uh, I want to put it up on a 10 foot to get it up higher so the kids can't mess with it, the goats can't climb on it. And it will go down there um, running in general area of where the other one is. But again, then I got to run a whole cable all the way up here. This way where it's set now, I can run a short cable connected to the power box and be getting power off of this winter. 
until I have time to hook it up right the way I need to hook it up. Uh, and no more electricity we use out of all the panels we have. We may end up having an electric bill at all because, um, again, we don't use a ton of electric. Our water heater is uh, electric, but we turn it off when we're not using it. Um, basically, we turn it on at night. We do dishes in it. We take baths, whatever, and uh, then it gets turned back off. So there's no hot water all day or all night uh, to be wasted. And I've insulated every pipe in there so it helps. Um, so anyway guys I thought I'd just give you a little video because I know a lot of you have seen these panels and I've had a couple of people ask um, where I was at on these panels what I would have been doing with them well I hadn't done a lot of anything with them uh, you know since I got them up here because I've been working on this cabin because I knew winter was coming and I needed to get certain things done I knew my wife was coming so I had certain things I had to get finished up before she got here so Anyway, that's where I'm at with that, but I think I'm going to go ahead right now and get these two panels going, get them tied into the grid. Uh, that way, at least I'm getting something out of them. You know, as money been spent, it's just been sitting in storage and been sitting out here in the weather and getting nothing back from it, so I might as well get something back from it. And like I mentioned um, to you guys, I did a... I bought one of those grid tie, uh, those cheap sun, 600 what good time inverters and i'm not trying to talk anybody out of buying one because they're actually pretty decent little inverters but i had a problem with them and i'll explain in another video that i want to do with them uh what i'm going to do with it and everything so all right guys uh i hope you guys have a great day and if you're new to the channel go ahead and uh if you like the videos go ahead and subscribe and give us a big thumbs up and comment please and uh if you're already a subscriber you know, guys, I appreciate it, and uh, go ahead and give us a, a big thumbs up and uh, comment. All right, guys, have a great day.